Well then, it would appear that Cavalero has some new Incarnons. What do we have today? We have Dara, Sestra, okay, Okina, not bad, Cerberus, and Sycorus. Huh, I wonder which one I already got today. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I know I have the Okina built. Oh, I have its Incarn. Oh. All right, I'll be back. Just you wait, Cavalero. I'll be back. All right, Cavalero, I am back. I went and got a couple things. Evolution 1. Okay, you will be able to apply spectral daggers implying cold. Ooh. Oh, we got some fun. I, I'm going to make this thing. I'm going to go level it up. Let's go see how we can build this. All right, I have leveled it up. I got it to its max evolutions. I've read through them and I've decided on what we're going to do. So I'll cover the evolutions first. I'll cover the builds I have for it. Then we'll go test in the simulacrum. Then go to a steel path mission to really see how it can uh, compete. So let's show off the evolution, shall we? All right, with the new Okina Prime in Karnon, this one has a special thing that many others don't have. When you get a kill with this weapon, you'll generate a spectral dagger that will target an enemy applying a max cold status effect. This is quite valuable because that increases your crit damage applying whenever you attack the enemy. It will also give you plus 1% melee damage, plus 20% sprint speed, and plus 20% parkour velocity. Next up is Evolution 2. We get Seeing Red and Synergistic Surety. When it comes to Seeing Red, you'll increase your base damage by 20. Same thing with Synergistic, but Seeing Red will give you 5 additional combo when you uh, target an enemy affected by Slash. And synergistic, uh, Synergist will give you, uh, on a crit hit, plus 6% status damage for 10 seconds, and that will stack up to 5 times. To me, this is more valuable because when it comes to using the Okina, you're going to be applying statuses thanks to the cold status that you have on your weapon. So you're just going to get more and more uh, damage. And since you'll have crits on your weapon, you'll be able to do even more damage with your status. So to me, Synergist is the better option. Next up is Evolution 3. We get Oricon Reach, Standoff, and Swordsman Celerity. When it comes to this, Oricon Reach, in my opinion, is the best for the plus one range. I don't think whenever you put the weapon away, your combo timer pauses is that valuable. Just use Naramon. And when it comes to Swordsman Celerity, you don't really need the movement speed. Finally, with Evolution 4, you get Commodore's Fortune, Alchemy of War, and Survivor's Edge. Commodore's Fortune will give you an increase in base crit chance by 6%. Alchemy of War gives you an increase in stat chance by 12 and the duration of your statuses will be increased by 25%. And the Survivor's Edge will give you plus 2% crit chance and plus 8% status chance. To me, either go with the first one or the third one. Both work quite nicely. To me, I'm going to go with Survivor's Edge for that more well-rounded uh, mixture. So they both sit at 32. So let's cover the uh, builds I have for this weapon. We'll test them and then go to Steel Path. So with the addition of the new update from Warframe being the addition of Komai, they brought along two new Galvanized mods, Galvanized Elementalist and Galvanized Steel. Why are these important? Well, while Galvanized Steel is a slightly worse version of Sacrificial Steel, it does now give us crit damage on top of crit chance, so we don't have to worry about adding a crit damage mod and a crit chance mod, so we just need to run one. Same thing with Galvanized Elementalist. This gives us status chance and status damage, so instead of running Weeping Wounds, we can now apply another mod in there. So what I have done is I've added Prime Reef, to this build and we're using prime fever strike this one we're sadly using virulent scourge because i didn't have the mod capacity but i wanted primed reach same thing with this last one we're using primed reach so the viral electricity build is obviously a melee influence build the corpus killer uses magnetic and toxin so we can pull all the enemies in with melee vortex and then toxin does its job and then finally the like and sub build as you all should if you enjoy my content this one is a blast electricity build the reason i like these types of builds because every time i've used one the entire room just explodes and it just keeps spreading now thanks to the addition of okina's uh, Karnon, the size that spawn daggers actually apply blast it may be a bug but i've seen them apply blast and it's spread so these are our builds i'm going to show off the Corpus Killer, all of them individually. So how does the Incarnon work now? Well, with the addition of all the new mods, uh, well, <laughs> as you see, the weapon does hit very, very hard now compared to my original video where it wasn't doing all that well, mainly because it wasn't built into a lot of crit damage. But now that since we get to use uh, Galvanized Steel, which gives us crit damage, we're now able to, well, use a crit mod without the worry. So now that I got the Incarnized, you see the daggers are flying around applying cold status effect. That one's struggling. As you see, it instantly freezes them and we're able to just keep attacking them. And when I killed that one, a new Psy appeared and hit this one. And when I do it again, there it is. A new Psy appears. So as you see, this build is quite strong. Let's show off the Corpus one, then the Blast one. All right, now we got the Vortex build on. So uh, how does this one work? Well, just like that, it pulls them all in. 
we apply our incarnate on and well as you see it does actually take a, in account who you killed beforehand so i have a ton of size and as soon as i spawn in a couple more uh 165 step corpus as you see the size can also apply melee vortex i think you can see where this goes so as you see, this one is quite phenomenal at pulling in enemies thanks to how Vortex works and the size also applying all the statuses you have on your weapon. So let's show off the blast build next. All right, and now we're on the blast build. So I'm going to try to get my Incarnal without accidentally killing all of them. And well, dang. As you'll see, once the side decides to go, it applied blast and electricity, but it didn't spread like it sometimes does. I see there it did it again and it did spread that time. That is why I think, in my opinion, the build with your Okina Prime and Karnon will not matter all too much as long as you know how the size or daggers that spawn work. So let's go to Still Path, and I'll give you all my final thoughts on this Okina Prime and Karnon. So I hope you guys are enjoying the video. I want to take a little bit of your time, but not too much. Uh, if you want to support my channel and show that, show that you enjoy these videos, make sure you guys hit that like button. Do subscribe and turn on that bell for post notifications. So you always get notified when a new video comes out. With the addition of all these new Karnons, there's going to be a couple of videos coming out almost every week. Uh, mainly because, well, there's a lot of new content, but there may be a slowdown because Destiny 2 is getting its new um, expansion. So I'll let you all uh, y'all go back to the video. All right. Well, here we are in the Murmur mission and I got the blast build, funnily enough, whenever I threw the dice and I got a how does this build work in a mission? Well, I think this is kind of giving it away. The only thing I'm worried about is kind of hurting myself because this weapon, since it is blast, these guys do explode. So I'm a little worried about possibly hitting myself. Hey, don't run for me. Good sir. I said don't run for why is it so fast? There we go. And kaboom. <laughs> that right there is why I love blast builds on melee weapons. Nothing can get away from you. And as you see, oh god, that was a nice crit. Uh thanks to how our let's see if I pause, can I see it? Or is it just that quick? Yeah, here it is. Uh as you saw with every crit I'm getting, it increases my status damage after that crit hit, and it's times five constantly because well we're hitting crits all the time thanks to galvanized steel so it's just and i think i had bl and blood rush yeah and blood rush so we're just getting a ton and i mean a ton of damage so what could you change with the build easily a couple things similarly you could take off uh reach and put on um attack speed you could run Arc arcane strike on your uh, warframe i'm running arcane i think i'm running arcane strike and uh avenger so i'm getting more crit and more attack speed uh, the, the weapon is just very dependent on how you like to play. With me, I like going around spamming my, well, not spamming in this case, holding left click, watching everything just in the room explode. So to me, it's quite fun. Uh, if I find the book, I'll show you how I do on against that. But if I can't find the book, I'll show you on Acolyte. So I'll see y'all then. All right. Well, I was able to find the book. It is funnily enough at the very end of the mission. So the thing that I was worried about did actually happen. But weirdly enough, not to me. It actually happened to my dog where the enemies had exploded in. Well, uh, caused him to die so that was a little upsetting i lost all my statuses so how do we do against ourselves i guess is this the word i mean not bad at all that's that's not bad for this being not good at individual targets oh, come on but yeah that's not that's not actually that bad at all so uh once again since it's obvious i'm going to be able to kill that guy as soon as he stops being a little douche and flying up in the air i will see y'all when the acolyte spawns all right that's funny that's quite funny literally as i stopped the uh acolyte spawned where are they oh well there they went uh there was an acolyte um i see not having any issues as you would just watch one side blow up that entire little section over there so i'll see y'all back in the orbiter not to give you all my final thoughts on this weapon okay we're back in the orbiter so what do i think my opinion the okina prime is hands down the best incarnon they've made it has good synergies, has fun uh, incarnate evolutions. That, uh, well, fun. They're good. They're good to use on the weapon. The weapon feels good to use. It's not a bad weapon anymore. Beforehand, it did have its problems when it came out. Uh, it was underpowered horribly. But thanks to the addition of some of the mods they've added, being galvanized steel and uh, galvanized elementalist, they've uh, buffed almost every melee weapon. Is it better than dual ichors? Probably not, because Dual Icors is its own class is stupidly strong. Same thing with the hate. But it, I'd, I'd say Okina is number three. Okina Prime, easily third best melee weapon in the game. And I and I love my melee weapons, as you can tell. 
I have a lot of them. Hell, I even have the Amanada I was supposed to build on. But I recommend this for everybody. So I hope to see you guys in the next video. Do tell me down below what you want to see next. More than likely, it's going to be that little thing right there, the Dara. I still need to get the Sybaris built and the Sycharis built to do those. I probably won't do the Sestra. The Sestra to me doesn't look that fun. So I'll see y'all in the next one. Do make sure you hit that like button and do subscribe and turn on that bell for post notifications. Peace out, everybody.